Well, Jimmy Snuka, of course, had to leave the WWE uh, before he permanently left for a while in 85. He left for a while in 84, they say, to go to rehab and get himself together. But they needed someone to come in and replace him, the feud with Roddy Piper. Here's from Piper's Pit, the debut of, I believe, a 19-year-old or 18-year-old, Tonga Kid. One of the finest masked men I have ever seen in my life, and it's always a pleasure to have you. Wait a second. I know I said I'd have Jimmy Schmuckers, one of his relatives out here. Hang on. I didn't expect his grandma and his nice, pretty little skirt there. I don't care what you got to say. All you can do is get out of here, man. I'm going to say something to you, Mr. Piper. Well, what do you want to say, big boy? Huh? You heard my cousin Jimmy Schmucker. And every time I look at him, it makes me think of you. Ooh, I want to challenge you now. I want to fight you. Let me tell you something, man. I'm a big shot. You ain't nothing but garbage. You say you're Jimmy Snooker. Look at you, man. Look at you. You sit here in that silly dress, and you want to challenge me. I'll tell you what to do. You want to fight somebody? You get through my man, the executioner, brother. And maybe, maybe next week, if you fight him next week and can beat him, maybe I'll give you a chance. Fight him? Then after I fight him, I want you. Oh, you want me? I want you. Oh, you want me, do you, huh? You want me? I ain't right nothing. I want you. Now. And there's a owner of a lonely heart to play us off, but in a minute and a half. Yeah. A minute, a minute taken, 49, a minute 49. That was, they, that would have taken 15 minutes on television today. And they would have been given a bunch of cute scripted remarks to banter back and forth to each other to elicit giggle from the other person as the, Oh, well, that was a sharp re retort. Let me tell you mine. And, and it showed Snuka was so over because just the mention of this guy being his cousin and I want to kick your ass for hurting my cousin, Piper. The people are fucking screaming. And as soon as Piper says, well, fuck you, you're wearing a fucking dress and you need to prove yourself. Ooh, because they're into him. And even if it wasn't the most flowery of verbiage, both guys sounded like they were fucking ticked off at each other and having some type of adult conflict instead of childishness. And again, the Tonga kid was brought in to substitute for Jimmy Snuka, who wasn't there. And by the way, the Tonga kid, not actually related to the Snuka family, but to the... The bloodline. The bloodline, the on Anawahis and the Fatus. And, He's a Fatu, I believe. Yeah. But they so, they but brought him in and got him enough. over. They got it him over. I mean, him and Piper, I think, main evented the garden. Yes. And it it was uh, again. It, it, I'm not taking anything away from Tonga Kid, but it was a tribute at that point in time to how over Snuka was. That just a it was the bloodline forty years ago, a member of the family coming to get even with Roddy Piper for injuring the Superfly. And like you said. 90 seconds, give or take, in and out. He goes in there. You haven't really seen him on the show before. You know that he's dressed like Jimmy Snuka. He's related to Jimmy Snuka. Piper's talking to some generic mask guy, the executioner. They made you interested. They didn't do too much. And, and I bet you when the Tonga kid fought the executioner, he beat him pretty convincingly, didn't he? I believe so. And the other thing is Piper, who always dressed everyone down, it's one thing if you dress people down and you're out quick. Because then you don't really just totally kill the baby face. But when it's a slow, drawn out thing and you're just with the crowd behind you saying your punchlines to the baby yeah. face, it kills the baby face. See, this is what I talk about when I say that, my God, the way that these confrontations happen now. And of course, they, we did critique this. These guys that would talk to each other like shit for 15 minutes without getting violent. 
would start would start out at the opening with in each other's faces, so they didn't even have any ground to advance. Now they're starting at opposite corners, and over a period of the fucking minutes as they drag by, they get closer to each other. But you can't just have a fucking heel dress a goddamn baby face down uninterrupted for that long even if you're going to have violence at the end of it without everybody in the audience already says, oh, fucking punch him already. Get to it. It's just, it's overdone. It needs to be intense, passionate, back and forth, and in and out, make your points and get to your fucking deal. How many guys have anyone before Piper, and not counting Lawler, because, you know, he was doing it, obviously, but Lawler, Piper, who else as heels were almost insult comics where they would stand there and they would hit you with line after line after line. But again, they kept their heat. It didn't make people yeah. love them right away. Well, Jimmy Hart, because he obviously emulated Lawler and me, because I obviously emulated both of them. Piper, because he was so quick in all honesty, you know, a, a guy like Nick Bockwinkle occasionally would have a, a, a witty, you know, fucking sword to stick in one of the the baby faces, but it was kind of a new thing at that point. You know, and you'd always had kind of chicken shit, smart ass type heels, but not necessarily ones that were that that were that sharp and that could. And quick. I, you know, it, well, and, and I, I'm trying to be humble and still group myself in that category, but yeah. what I was going for was making the people, like Dennis Condry said at one point with the Midnight Express matches, especially on spot shows, make the people laugh at the heels because the baby faces are outsmarting them and taking the air out of the pompous windbags. And then make the people mad because you make them quit laughing when you take over. I, w I always said that I was such a smart ass, it was better if I was actually goddamn a little bit funny too. Because people, if you tell a funny fat wife joke, it might be funny, except if, if it's you're telling it to the person whose fat wife you're talking about. So when I was knocking the baby faces, fortunately, the baby faces were over because they didn't like hearing that about their heroes, the Rock and Roll Express or Dusty Rhodes being fat or whatever the case may be. And so that's why I had heat. But at the same time, the people could sit and listen to me eviscerate the job guys because they didn't really care about them on a personal basis. And... It was entertaining programming. The other big difference, too, is, you know, with Piper, he could infuriate you, and you knew if you bought a ticket, you were going to see him in a match, and someone will get their hands on him. With you, you would infuriate the fans. There was no guarantee that the babyface was going to get their hands on you. But over a period of time, if you built that up, then the payoff usually in the course of most of the programs was they would. Whether it would be five minutes with Cornette or Cornette in a cage or six-man tag or whatever the case, you just couldn't do it all the time because if they beat me up all the time, that's a, a wrestler gets beat up all the time by the nature of it. And he gets heat by winning and cheating if he's a heel. And, you know, that type of thing. But a manager keeps his heat by not getting beaten up all the time, doing more offense than defense, so when he does get the shit kicked out of him, it's from being built up and being deserved, and then he's got to go back and start being dastardly again. You can't just... You know, the, the that's why the manager bump at the finish of a big match, if the manager has heat, is the, one of the bigger pops in a match because the people see the wrestlers taking a bump all the time. But you build to, and the anticipation rises that somebody's going to get their hands on the fucking manager. And when he finally takes the big bump, yeah, that's where the baby should go in the air. 